I love having this guy in my feed. Such great videos. Yo, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad people enjoy this uh, hairy caveman looking guy showing up in their feed to talk about computer science. Uh, so now you're asking, does the CPU then actually store ints as four ox? There's so much in that one question to unpack, okay? I don't even know if I can unpack it in one video, uh, but you, just by asking that question, you are going on a journey. You are gonna go into a rabbit hole where you are gonna learn about data types and their sizes and how the CPU actually deals with them. I can give you some pointers. I can't answer that question like super simply in a video, but I can give you some pointers to help you there, okay? CPU storing ints. We have to talk about what an int is because I'm assuming int is short for integer. And when people hear integer, they think, oh, okay, that's a number, right? And then some people who kind of know computer science are like, well, yeah, it's a 32-bit number. Well, an integer can be all sorts of different sizes. If you go pull up like, you know, the spec for the C programming language, I'm pretty sure it says like a short, which is a short integer, has to be at least 16 bits. And then an int, non-short, has to be at least the size of a short. And then there was also a long int, which has to be at least 32 or 64. I think it's 32. Um, my point is, there is a specification that says this somewhere. An integer probably has to be at least 16 bits, but can technically be larger than that. For most situations and most modern operating systems, if someone said integer, I would just assume 32-bit until told otherwise. That's kind of like the colloquial usage of that currently. But yeah, so now you're asking, does the CPU store it that way? Well, how does a CPU store numbers? First of all, where are we talking about where is it storing? Are we talking about like an L1 cache, an L2 cache, or when it actually gets processed? Long story short, start looking up word size, okay? The CPU speaks not in bits, but in words. And the size of the word depends pretty much on the architecture. So like if you have a 64-bit processor, it's gonna have a 64-bit word size. I don't think it necessarily has to. There might be some exceptions to that, but that would be very rare. Typically, the size of the architecture will tell you the size of the word. I'm pretty sure that's actually what it means. Um, I'm The reason I'm hesitating is because if I say, there's no situation where those numbers are different, someone will be like, yes, there is a situation. So that's why I always hedge my bets with tech because there always seems to be some sort of exception somewhere. Um, but yeah, you're, you're talking about CPU word size, which is the size of the data that the CPU can actually process all at once. And then on top of that, you also have like the architecture. So like if you have a 32 bit CPU, a lot of people think the address size is also that. So like the size of a pointer would be 32 bits if you're on a 32 bit CPU, or if you're wondering what the size of a pointer is on a 64 bit, it's going to be 64 bit. doesn't really hold true. If you look at the eight bit NES, technically addresses are 16 bits, even though the architecture is eight bit. So it does take two instructions to load a full address there, unless it's in the zero page, like it gets super messy. Look up CPU word size.